text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tick tock, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? Two four five nine six four. Five two four three nine. You know. Two oh five nine six four. Five two four three nine. You know. And we are live for the Fenar 200. <laughs> We're live from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Love it. Hey, move the elephants back. Okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, so we're here to uh, talk about. Um, this thing called real estate investing with a strong emphasis on wholesale real estate where your cash or credit uh, does not matter. Um, it's not a barrier to entry. Most people think they need great credit and a lot of money to start investing in real estate. But um, we've discovered a real estate loophole <laughs> where uh, if you just understand the power of a purchase and sales agreement, AKA a contract, you can make money and lots of it. So I uh, got the full house here. Both of the lovely young ladies uh, are here to um, uh, put this thing together. Make sure you like and share this. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn on the little bell. Uh, hit all so you can receive all of the free content that I upload um, on a weekly basis. And when we go live, you'll get the notification. Make sure you follow all of us on TikTok, Instagram, uh, and Twitter. Boom. All right. Uh, welcome, welcome. Mele Kiliki Maka. Yes. <laughs> That's actually Hawaiian. Oh, Merry okay. Christmas. Wow, you you know, that. Well, you was a Asia's Wawa. live from uh, Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and I in Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome guys. As Ty mentioned, this is the place where you ask the questions in regards to wholesale and real estate with little to no uh, money or credit. Um, you're in the right place. Really, really good place. It's Thursday, November 18th, 2021 is rounding itself out. Um, 2022 is coming swiftly around the corner, but you still have the opportunity to get some Question. checks in, to get some checks in the bank before the end of the year. Renikia, how are you doing? I'm great. I don't think I'm doing as great as you all <laughs> in Zimbabwe and Hawaii, but hey, I'm here. <laughs> you, you are wherever your mind says you are. Ooh, I like it. Okay. <laughs> and that's where we get. All right, guys. Um, you post the questions in the chat boxes, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and I will read the questions and your answers will be answered. But guess what, guys? You can text the word Gator, G-A-T-O-R, to the number 205-964-5243 and join us live and ask your questions. You will get bumped to the front of the line and you will join us live tonight. You can ask your question, another question, and maybe even another question, um, but you have to join us live in order to do so. Tawana Spurgeon, hey, Muna Talix from ATL. Muna is from Kansas City, by the way. VB, yes, it's really show 200. Indira from Ohio, thank you. Hmm. Jason, 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 you can talk to someone on the team, that same number that's on the wall there. Um, team isn't actually a thing. Mm. That should be one. But you can do time, time. Yes, you can well, actually well, do time. Well, well, that's technically for, for something else. Later. But but it was, it was, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. Jason, what you want to talk about? <laughs> Ty Rob, um, Michael Brooks, True King, Dexter, thank you all for joining us. Um, let's see here. Over here, we got Justin Grindford. He's bona fide. Dreamy eyes bite. I see you. And many... Horatio, I hope I said that correctly. And CA Daily, go ahead and post the questions on those social media platforms as well. Which is gonna jump right into this. Bettina Miner says, "Yes, I got the live. Oh my gosh, I have a serious question. What are the steps to obtain a house from HUD to wholesale? Help! I saw three properties here that are over a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars with a profit of at least thirty grand." Okay, so HUD to wholesale. Can you wholesale HUD properties? Mm, it's almost impossible to wholesale a HUD properly unless you do a double closing. 
Um, you have to do a double closing HUD. HUD is, is pretty much pre foreclosures or in foreclosure properties that already been foreclosed on. Um, and one thing about purchasing a foreclosed property, the lender um, has to approve the HUD. Um, and nine times out of ten, or almost ten times out of ten, they'll never approve a HUD with a wholesale fee on it. So in order to do it, you're going to have to double close. If possible. What do you think, Ty? Yeah, it, it's just going to be difficult. They're going to control the entire process, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, from which most lenders or institutions, which HUD is technically an institution, um, and they're just going to control too much of the process and makes it difficult. She says a $30,000 profit. You're not even taking in consideration, obviously. Well, you may be, but I'm assuming you're not. Repairs, closing fees, paying the realtor twice. Oh, well, once, because well, you'll just be on the buy side of it. Uh, trust me, it's not 30K there uh, to be made. Now, it's probably a great deal for somebody that wants to live in it, but for an investor, um, unless you've already ran the numbers or you just see that uh, the ARV is 130 and you can get it for 100, no, nah, that's that's not a deal, you know, anyway. so but Oh, man, and you have to keep a HUD property for at least a year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's the other thing. So. Yeah. Uh, it just it just it just easier. Um, you have to you would have to have the right. You basically would have to have a buyer that says, "Here's some money. Go find, me, go spend it, and I'll pay you this." Right. But if and you got that kind of resource, then HUD is not. You shouldn't even be looking at. You got all kind of stuff that you could be targeting. So mm -hmm. what I call a lazy buyer, and not many of the people that have money are, are lazy in that sense. They're just going to hand you money over and do it. But the normal process of wholesaling that we talk about. It is very difficult to do it with her. That just is just keep it that simple. Mm -hmm. All right. Plus, there are easier deals out there, as I said. So. Okay, thank you. And then you got to bid against other people. Right. You know what I'm and saying? It's like the main properties out there, everybody wants. So. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a lot of competition with other properties, though. So. Yeah. All right, True King, thank you for joining us. Um, so. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, True King, you said it's been a minute since you've made a live, but you're here. Thank you. Joining us, he says, hello, big flip in ladies. Uh, and Dara says she in Panama then. I hear you. Okay. I, I okay. hear you. So, okay. <laughs> well, we got to make a, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? We're in the metaverse out here. Everybody in the metaverse. Where we yeah, at? Where yeah, we oh, at? Yeah, we, we, we got, we got a, uh, uh, over, no, I got that God going. Um, overlay. Overlay. We got yeah. overlay in Panama. So we'll see. Stay, yeah. stay around. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Hey, dear. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Thy Bovic um, from Instagram says, What are your opinions on wholesaling land? My area is hot with land. Land's hot. You know, land is, the, land is almost becoming just as popular as a property with a house on it. Um, it's actually probably more popular. Um, I think what people, a lot of, I mean, the buyers have to understand is, you know, the ins and out of developing land um, that comes with additional expenses when you develop land. But land is very popular. I mean, you know, I think any any real estate investor who's invested in fix and flip properties should be looking to buy land too because it's almost better and easier to just build new construction than to tear down walls of a of a vacant property and things of that nature. So it's the same buyer, the same process. The difference is just understanding how to value land so you can position yourself with a, a nice wholesale fee um, to value that, um, which it can be valued in a lot of different ways. You can take the tax assessed to value the land, which is almost always a little bit less than what the value is. Or you can take a consideration of what you develop it on the land. Okay, if you're going to develop something and sell it for seven hundred thousand, that may have a little river room in there to, to sell it to you a little bit higher, based on how you're developing this land. Um, so it's the same. What do you say? Tom? Oh yeah. Um, at the end of the day, if you can uh, find a great deal, place it on the contract, and uh, have a buyer for a boom. Uh, as she said, that one of the biggest issues with land is coming up with a value because you, you don't have anything to compare to co compare it to in a lot of cases. So um, uh, one of the simple things you can do, and it's not always a home run, 
whatever the county says it's worth, uh, just take 50% or less of that amount and try to get it at that price or less. So, uh, but one of the great things about land in a lot of cases, whereas with a house, sometimes you don't have access to it, whether it's vacant or occupied, the door is always open with land. So you don't have to actually <laughs> show it. So <laughs> um, uh, uh, assuming that it's not a fence on it or anything, but the door is always open. So. All right. Um, Anya, yes. Um, Anya's question was, do you and Jamil still do comps? We did one last Sunday. Last Sunday. 40, uh, episode 41. All right. Uh, Anya, hopefully you can catch that or you can go back and rewatch um, last Sunday's episode. Um, oh, let's see here. Baja Baja Racer. Yeah, I'm overcomplicating that. Baja Racer says, hi, from Tennessee. He wants to know, how many wholesale deals can you do a month by yourself? I guess, realistically. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's absolutely no cap to what you can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no cap. Nope. No. Okay. Okay. Let me flip that. Uh, so, Shayla wants to know, is there a certain contract that you would use to JV? Hmm. I mean, it's a lot of different ways you can JV. It's a lot of different ways to structure your paperwork to JV a deal. I wouldn't say it's a separate contract, but it's a lot of different ways um, to JV. Um, there is a JV agreement, so you all can specify how you would like to you know really structure your profits of your jv agreement um i mean you can almost do two wholesale deals in the midst of the contract i mean two wholesale contracts in the midst of it um you know you can you and the you and the jv partner can come up with your own agreement notarize it and that's what you go with i mean it's a lot of different ways to structure a jv partnership um, what do you say so uh, yeah, a lot of people will just go with uh, uh, something, you know, with that type of verbiage that is, a, it's a, uh, I guess, temporary partnership or, um, as say, joint, joint venture. Um, my preference is to, um, I want to I wanna have purchase and sales agreements in place. So if I have the seller, um, then... The, the agreement with uh, me and the, the wholesaler is going to be a purchase and sales agreement. I'm going to treat them as a buyer. And then when the buyer comes to the table, we'll do whatever paperwork is needed there. If it's done that way now, uh, let me, well, let me back up. If, this, if the, if the uh, wholesaler, if I have the deal with the seller and the wholesaler and I agree just to split the deal 50-50, then I'm going to do a purchase and sales agreement at the same price that I have a contract with with the, uh, with the, um, uh, with the seller. And then whenever we do a contract with the buyer, both of our names go on that agreement with the buyer, which is another purchase and sales agreement. Now, if it's a situation where uh, they, I just give them a price and whatever they make above that, then same thing. I'm still going to just do a purchase and sales agreement at that price. And then whenever they bring an actual buyer to the table, um, you know, he'll have that agreement with them. So, um, you know, then we we'll submit it to the title company or closing attorney it just spelled out. Or whatever but if i'm on the buyer side of it uh same thing you know i'm gonna treat them as a seller either we're going to split it 50 50 or they're going to give me a price but it's still going to be a purchase and sales agreement you know so um the only thing is just when you're doing that just the timing of it you can't let a whole well you can't even let a buyer tie your property up but definitely a lot of not a wholesaler because a lot of time earnest money may not be involved or whatever um so just just make sure you know what you're doing all right. Uh, so let's see here. Game two times wants to know how can I sell in Columbus, Ohio? It's profitable, but we have had no luck. Um, if y'all see full text later, please feel free to reach out. Okay. So no, I got your question right now. So Columbus, Ohio, but not deep, 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 similar size to Birmingham. I think it's a little bigger. So. You just got to find a great deal. And, you know, I'll just have buyers to go with it. You know, I'm not, you, we would probably need a little bit more information to try to help you um, on what, what have you done uh, as far as generating leads? How many sellers are you talking to, per, people that own real estate? 
Uh, are you talking to a day? How many of them are interested in selling? And you know, how many offers are being made on a daily basis? Uh, if you can give us an idea on that, you could probably troubleshoot what your issue may be. All right. Um, so he's bona fide. Says I have a property. I'm almost done rehabbing. I owe forty thousand dollars. The ARV will be around two hundred thousand. Would you sell or refinance? You got that, Renee. You all in at forty? Ah, she's all in at 40. Okay. That's what it says. It just says I have a property. I'm almost done rehabbing. I owe 40,000 ARV will be 200,000. And that's TikTok, uh, Instagram. No other information. Um, that's that's I would say awesome. This. <laughs> that is awesome. I would say this is two things you can do with it. you sell it. You make what a hundred some thousand one time. You refinance, take your equity out of it, still keep the house. Um, to me, houses are banks. Um, and when you have that type of equity, I wouldn't necessarily sell it. I'll just, I'll just continue to tap into my equity over time, flip it, flip another property with my equity, pay off the equity, go back and use it again, pay it off, use it again. You know, I think, you know, I, what I want to help us understand is that houses are banks. You can sell it one time and make one time, a one time lump sum, or you can have it forever put a tenant in there, allow that tenant to pay, pay, pay your monthly fee while you play with your equity, not necessarily play with it, but while you move your equity around and invest your money so you can continue to multiply it. Yep. Okay. Ty, this is for you. This is from K Fox singer 82. Mm. This is Vincent. What is the best texting app to use for the business? Well, um, um, I'm, I'm, uh, the, uh, service that I'm going to refer you to, if you, uh, text the word text to the 205-964-5243, you're going to receive a link back and it's going to be an instructional video on number one on how to build your list, how to skip trace it, and then how to use the, uh, text, uh, service that I use. So, um, it'll all be spelled out in that video. From A to Z. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, K Fox, hopefully you got that. If not, just dial back in about 17 minutes and you'll have that. Oh, boo. Let's see here. Okay. Bettina, I have found a property that I would like to keep and rent out as a transitional housing for ladies. Owner wants 22000 Can you help me find funding? Nikia. Yep. Rennie. Um, that's a good question. When it comes to like private lending, you know, usually our minimum is like fifty thousand. Um, I am doing a lot of things behind the scenes so we can go down to like thirty-five thousand at least. Um, because there's a lot of properties in our community that we can pick up and do something like that with that can gain a lot of equity and a lot of cash flow um, and, and allow us to build our legacies, but from a private lending standpoint, we do have a minimum of fifty thousand. I would get very creative with that. I mean, twenty-two thousand is it's not hard to to um, finance from like an unsecured credit um, type of set um, setup. I've got funding and things of that nature. I'll get very creative because a lot of banks probably won't go. So maybe start with a um, a community bank. Um, but if you're not in a place to be bankable, then I would get creative and find the money using unsecured credit lines and, and you know, uh, being able to um, uh, find somebody maybe within your family who want to go in with you on that and you come up with 12 or 11, they come up with 11. I would get very creative because that's not bad. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, do you need rehab? It may need rehab. Is it cash flowing? Is it moving ready at 22? Yeah, I guess we'll get them to, to uh, follow up on that uh, actual question. Uh, if you want to, um, I got the banner up. So if you want to. Um, oh, 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 awesome. Well, uh, that's a good time to throw me that alley. So um, first and foremost, thank you. Um, but um, if you all are interested in financing um, any of your properties, looking for unsecured credit to help you finance properties, you can go to findmynextdeal.com. We are a nationwide private lending. We lend in all 50 states. And we want to make 
money and um, funding accessible to the average person who may not realize that, hey, you can buy several estate with absolutely no tax returns, no bank state, I mean, no um, income verification, no pay stubs, you can still buy their real estate. Um, there are creative ways out there for you to still be able to um, finance that portfolio or finance that fix and flip with absolutely no job. Um, but if you're interested in any of those financing financing options, just go to findmynextdeal.com. All right. Okay, boom. Um, I don't know what she had on her play. She stepped to the women, little women's room. So uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, okay, boom. All right, so um, let me trade this back out. Um, yeah, uh, so Michael uh, Brooks says, uh, I'm, I'm currently uh, trying to, um, uh, where is it? I'm currently trying to uh, get into wholesaling houses. What are the first steps to uh, learning how to get into this business? I think, <laughs> I think you got that <laughs> a lot. Oh, well. Uh, with the videos and everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll go. All right, so, um, um, well, uh, Michael, you, you, you've already started. Um, if you're here tonight, I'm not sure um, how you found us. Um, I don't know if this is your first time um, uh, being on our live here, which we do every Thursday night, uh, most Thursday nights. But um, right here on YouTube, my particular YouTube channel, <laughs> My YouTube channel. Um, I've been putting out this contest since August of 2008, so 13 years, uh, over 700 videos. Um, I like to think most of them uh, have some value uh, within us that will, um, you know, slowly build your expertise on the subject. Um, as you'll go through some of these videos, you'll see testimonials. Uh, individuals that um, have watched my videos and uh, and take them and, and ran with them and change their financial situation and and, and their uh, family's financial situation. So everything you need to know is right here. Uh, here's a uh, perfect example of a young man that um, I interviewed on Saturday. Uh, one of the better interviews I've done. All of them are good. Anybody out there watching? Um, but. Uh, if you go, oh, I've seen that. That's amazing. Oh yeah, this is an amazing interview. He's twenty-two, mm -hmm. still living with his folks. Then mm -hmm. he hadn't even told them he didn't did. I don't know how many deals he sell. You know what I'm saying? Forsyth, Georgia. I yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah. He's right there in Atlanta, <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, say uh, he was depressed. He was going to school to become a mechanical engineer, and uh, say you know. Then he blew out his Achilles playing basketball. And, uh, you know, just sitting at home and depressed and just started watching my videos and, and other people's uh, individuals' videos. And um, uh, he took action. And so uh, this is where he's at now. So um, I hats off to him and say, I asked him if he's still living with his folks. He was like, yeah. I said, man. That's I what it's about. Absolutely. I said, <laughs> I said, your folks, I'll be so, they'll be so proud of you, man. I know they may be a little disappointed about the school thing, but once they see this, Right. Trust me, it'll change or whatever. Right. You know, and you know, and I get it. You know, you want the best for your child. They may have not went to college, so you think that's the automatic path that they need to take or whatever. But this, this ain't when, when right. and I'm assuming his parents are probably my age. This ain't when we were growing up. Right. They got this thing out there called the internet <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that uh, teach you basically anything. Now he was going into a field where you can actually get out and get a job immediately, mechanical engineer. Right. Okay, but if you go to school and and get a history degree like Tyrone Taylor did, <laughs> good luck. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all doing? This history degree. Yeah. Good luck. So, but um. But anyway, the answer is the question. But what I love about what he did was he jumped out in a commercial. I I seen you post about it and I started, you know, looking through his posts and stuff. I'm like, man, he figured out, he understands the numbers behind storage space and things of that nature. He had this in one of his posts, he had this um Excel sheet. I'm really big on numbers and you know, and I've seen I was like, okay, he really he, he really perfected this. I mean, he had it 
totally, you know, drawn out. I mean, exactly how to evaluate storage buildings, which the average person jumping into real estate would never jump out there, commercial and storage building and, and things that I need you. So I just commend him for jumping out there and figuring it out, you know, um, anyway. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mr. Greg, boy, you, hey, that's what's up, man. I was so impressed. So impressed. Yeah. Okay. So you, so you want to check that video out on, on the channel. Mm -hmm. Just go to YouTube and do a search for uh, uh, $90,000 um, Flip Man, and it should pop up. Banner, banner, banner. Huh? Banner. What banner? You going to put a banner up? You took my banner down. <laughs> What? You took mine down, so you gonna put one up? <laughs> you mean, <man? laughs> she got, she, I got some controls over here. I can basically do whatever she's doing. On. You sound like that news know. anchor lady who, who that man saw you was talking about you. I don't know. It's y'all hard to see, but it was funny. I'm, I'm gonna have to look that one up because it, yeah. it's, it's probably exactly what's going on right here <laughs> in Hawaii. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, cool. A Z B uh, wants to know what's a good deal when there is still a mortgage in place. If you can give a short example, uh, let me tell you a quick story. Right here, we go. Story time. Okay. Adrian is called, okay, so the, the app that we're using, whatever she can do, I can do. I can put up the banners, I can see the questions and all that stuff. So she made a little snicks, smart comment. So I basically, she wants to tell me, like once I was in this strip club long, long, long time ago, oh and the uh, young lady that was on the stage did not like what the DJ was playing. So he stopped the music, he said, you dance, I play the music. <laughs> Literally. So that's what Adrian wants to tell me. You talk, I produce. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm with it. I'm with it. I got this. I got the turntable. His new trickery over there. Now, I wasn't doing bad. Like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Who's moving the screen? And it ain't me. Okay. It's like, what a better Zimbabwe. That's what they got going on over here. That's how they do it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wait till you get back. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, what's a good deal when there is still a mortgage in place? As long as the numbers add up, right? The numbers yeah. just have to make sense whether it's a mortgage or or not. Right. The deal is the deal. <laughs> the mortgage got to give people below the deal. Um, you know, but you know, it's it's all about the numbers. So. Uh, when a market is in, is in place, you know, at the end of the day, as a wholesaler, as a real estate investor, the name of our game is discounted properties. So a lot of times when there are mortgages in place, that may not be a discounted property. It could be a property that's at retail value. It may be the, the value may be less than what the mortgage is really owed. So so you the, the, the answer to that question is just understanding your numbers understanding in, in, in correlation with the mortgage how much can i flip this property out for so if the mortgage is 150 and the out the repair value is 150 that that's not a good deal that's not even a deal at all um so i would just just take the mortgage out of it and run your numbers and then figure out where the market sticks in that once i run my numbers if that mortgage is more than what i'm willing to pay then it's not a good deal all right, there you have it. Hopefully that got you a better understanding on what makes the deal, even if there is a mortgage. Um, let's see here. So talking about the mortgage, Day Loving Bay says, I may have a property under contract come Saturday when I go see it. Um, the owner wants $425,400 at the least, but they owe two hundred and sixty-three dollars in the mortgage. What's the best way to get them to bite offering 137 um i want to tell them i'll pay off the mortgage but what if they disagree with the offer as they should if the property is worth 400 <laughs> why would i sell it for 130 um so it has to make sense to the seller too um i mean sellers don't always just want to sell it at a discount um it's usually a reason why property is at a discount 
Um, it, it could be it could be renovated. Um, but the key is, is that I think you're missing the after repair value number. So figure out, okay, if add the add bills. I mean, you say the property, you say he won't for twenty. So I'm thinking four hundred, four fifty is what the add bills value is today. Or maybe that's what you're saying with after repair value. But determine what is the after repair value. Okay, if I did pick this property up and and um, rehab it or you know renovate it, how much can I really sell this property for? And that would then that would determine where you need to get your where you need to offer, how you need to make that offer, depending on what you can sell it for once you do rehab it. All right. Um, thank you. Let's see here. Jason Johnson. Good evening, everyone. Thanks. Ty for responding with the video the other day. Um, when I reached out to you, I got two houses under contract and marketing for buyers. Thanks again. Oh, well, you're welcome. And that was from the wholesaler trucker. Oh, that's what's up. Awesome. Congratulations. Okay, so Jay Duke says, so once I get the house under contract, do I take the earnest money to a title company of my choosing or wait until the cash buyer chooses the location? Hmm. Either way, either one works. Either one works. Now, a lot of times, you know, the buyer, the buyer and seller may want to use their attorney, you know, and you have to almost give them a reason why you should use your attorney over their attorney. So just be mindful that if, if you know that you don't really want to share uh, with the parties or how it's structured, if you use one of the other attorney, their attorney going to tell them that you wholesale the deal and this is what's going on. So if you don't want their attorney to expose what's going on, then you got to do what it takes to control the deal. And a lot of times when I wholesale a lot and I knew I needed to control it, I'll tell them, hey, title's already ready to go. I could have literally just started title yesterday. Title is ready to go. I already got title. We can close in the next two or three days. And I may, you know, I may pay that for title, something like that, to just give them a tentative to go with my attorney. Because, if, like I say, some 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 parties are very transparent. It's like, hey, I'm wholesaling this. This is what it is. Now, if you're not transparent with your parties, then just know that if their attorney gets it, they have the ability to tell that buyer or seller how you're structuring that deal that could blow up your whole deal, too. So just be mindful of that. You want to control it as much as you can either way. All right. Let's see here. I'm trying to add. I'm trying to add a keyword. I'm sorry. Okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, cool. Dad. Nine oh nine says, "Ty, you are the man. Been watching you on YouTube for four years. All right. There you go. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hopefully, it's helpful, man. Um, Dibovic says, how can you approach a door knock and script doing it for the first time? Ooh, getting gay to going out there knocking on folks' doors. You have a script for that? Uh, yeah, if you text the words, well, for door knocking. Door knocking. Oh, <laughs> no, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to text on that. Uh, now, it's something I've never done before. So, um, I, mm. <laughs> that that opening, you know what I'm saying? That opening statement is going to be key. Uh I get I, I have to treat it the same way I would um, if I'm calling them, you know what I'm saying? Just hey, now I gotta introduce yourself. Hi. Uh my name is uh Ty. I'm uh with uh cash.com and um cash with a K. And uh we buy uh um uh, looking to um reach I'm trying to reach the owner that owns the property at one two three Main Street. Um would you happen to be that individual or uh, whatever? And, and y'all go from there. You know, right. if they say, yeah, I am, you know, what, 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 do, you, what do you want to know about it? Or whatever they may say. At that point, you already told them you want to buy it. So you want to know if they're interested in selling it. So if you got a moment, um, I love to try to discuss uh, uh, the, your property with you and we'll buy it as is. And hopefully we can give you a fair offer that will allow both of us to sleep well at night. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, definitely don't go to someone's door reading a script because at that point, I can tell you not the buyer. And I'm, I'm it's, a, it's a whole red flag at that point. 
Uh, because, you know, if you're really buying, just on it, just put your, it's a conversation. Don't overthink it. You knock on someone's door, hey, I'm in the I'm in the area. Um, we, we are investors in the area, buying a lot of properties in this subdivision and um came across your property. Um, are y'all in the in the in the business that want to sell? If so, we can close you in seven, ten days for a price, blah, blah, blah. You want to keep you want to it's a conversation. You know, um, you know, put yourself in a position where if someone come and knock on your door randomly, how would you want them to handle that? You know, um, how you how would you want that conversation to be? So the key is, is that, you know, you build rapport. And I think there's a lot. It may not be that easy, but I think it's easier to build a rapport with people when you write there eye to eye because you ain't going to cuss me out right there in my face. Unless you would do on the phone and hang up in my face. You may slam the door, but hey, I'm trying to I'm, I'm knocking on your door to bring you some money. So that would be rude. So I, I think you know the conversation may be a lot easier when you just knock on the door and just let them know, hey, I'm in the area. I'm seeing this property. Thought we'll come up and knock on the door. I want to see if y'all in the in the business and want to sell your property. We are investors here. Um, you know, just build that rapport. Next thing you know, they'll start telling telling you know you about their family that grew up here and you know, you got to listen to them and just build that relationship with them. Maybe just look at it as a regular conversation. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> Christopher Mariani says he thinks the 70% rule is a bit outdated. He wants to know what's the best way to see what buyers are paying in each market. Um. Well, the, the, just understand that that's more for people to get just starting out in the business. And I guess he may uh, say that. So um, a lot of it is just whenever you're actually pulling comps into All right. So, um, but generally speaking, um, I don't know. Describe why you think it's outdated. What what proof do you have of that? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not why you say anything else? What proof do you have of that? I I, I definitely want to add on that. Um, you know, saying the seventy percent rule is outdated is like almost saying one plus one one plus one equals two is outdated. It, it's a percentage. So. No matter if, what, if the properties, if the value goes to a million or if it go down to a hundred thousand, is a percentage of whatever that value is. So it's, it's one of the most powerful numbers of all numbers when you're looking to invest into real estate. Why? Because at the end of the day, if you're going to invest into real estate, would you want 10% profit? Would you want to be all in at 90% expenses and you only make 10%? Would you want to be in at, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that 30% is so you don't cut into your profits. And I don't think, you know, anything that's going to cut into my profit would never be outdated. So that 7% rule is a very powerful number. It would never be outdated. Every investor should always stand on that. The only, only when you kind of vary is when you're doing a buy and hold. But if I'm doing a fix and flip, why would you want to be all in at ninety percent of the of the value of the property? Why would you want to Why would you want to cut into your profit? So understanding what that number entails is lets you know that it's not outdated because that thirty percent, seventy percent is what you all in. That's your purchase. That's your rehab. That means that the rest of the thirty percent is your profits. So tell me how cutting into your profits would be outdated. Okay, uh, Mariani, if you're there, you can follow up with that, and I will most definitely read um, your comment to that question. Um, Everyday Hustles, yes, wants to know if they could possibly submit a seller financing deal. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Okay. Also, we got Terry Jones in here. Let's, let's see what my boy talking about. Okay. Ooh, oh, down there at the bottom. Hold, scroll, scroll, scroll. Terry, you're joining us live. What's up? Hey, how y'all doing? Oh, well, thank you. Where are you calling from, Terry? Uh, Indianapolis. 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 Okay, okay. What's, What's your question tonight? Um, over the weekend, I went out and I put up like about thirty, 
30 bandit signs. I rode around the day and all of them was still up. Do I need to go out and add more? Most definitely. You done. It, it, uh, <laughs> it appears you've done an excellent job of choosing, choosing the right area. If all of them are still up, uh, hopefully they, you're, um, you, you, they're visible. Uh, hopefully the visibility is good, but, um, if they're up, yeah, you're in the area where, you know, you should be able to get some traction. Uh, 30 is a start, but uh, yeah, you need to compound that uh, a good bit. Okay, 30, thank 30 you. 30 more for sure. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir, no problem. All right, all. was that all you had? You got another question for us tonight? No, that's it. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Yeah. All right, guys, you too can join us live and get your questions asked first. If you text the word Gator, G-A-T-O-R, to the number 205-964-5243. And you still have the opportunity to join us. Um, let's see. Next question. Titan TV. Hey, guys, I'll try to make this quick. I'm working 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Oh. And the box at the box plant. And I don't want to cold call people after 7 p.m. Can you all refer me to a service that will answer my bandit sign calls? Mm, that will mm. answer your bandit sign calls. Um, well, I, I'd use some answering services. Um, uh, which one? Oh, well, Pat Live is pretty good. Um, the other one that I, yeah, I wouldn't you know, recommend them, but I've been using I don't whoop them into shape, so. Um, but Pad Live is pretty good. Um, uh, you can reach out to them, and um, they they're 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 used to dealing with uh, uh, investors slash wholesalers. So, um, but that's that's a good service. Um, do you get breaks? Okay. Well, I mean, you can always maybe make a phone call to yeah, yeah. break. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hope they ain't got you working seven seven like that with your friends. But um, you know, maybe breaks. You can always try like Fiverr. Fiverr has a lot of, you know, cheap assistance and cold calling people and things of that nature. Um, that could maybe answer your phone calls as well. I'm um, sorry, guys. Also, you know, put a voicemail there and say, Hey, you know, tell them to text you, you know, or when someone call you text them, and say, Hey, Got your information. I'll give you a call back, and you know whatever or something of that nature. I mean, maybe your text. You can text during those those offers. That can help you as well. Hmm. All right. So Kayla Bela and Dexter, I see you. I will bring you on. Just let me read this question that I put up, and you will be our next live guest. Thank you, Dexter. Um. So Kayla Bela says, I have a property getting ready to go under contract. The owner wants forty thousand. The ARV is two sixteen. Repairs estimated around thirty thousand. Could I advertise this deal for fifty? So forty mm -hmm. plus thirty, so that's seventy. Ooh, that's a lot, a lot. To, the, to the to the young guy that I that just said it was outdated. This is how every lender evaluate these deals. I don't have my calculator on me. When is that me percent times 216? Uh, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> so, two, two if the lenders are evaluating it like this, I think we all should stay. All right. Or, you so know, what was the repairs? 30. 30. 30. And he said he's trying to put it back out there at 50. What do yes. you say? He's trying to add 50. No, he wants to put it back out there for 50. 50. And what are you getting in the contract for? 40. 40. No, no. no, 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 no. You can probably do 75. No, no, no. He needs to do uh, at least 100. 100. Ooh, at least it. 100. And that's the deal. At least 100. At least 100. Well, See, this is why the important to know your numbers. I like this example because when you know your numbers, you can maximize your wholesale fee. So you always, even as a wholesaler, I'll still evaluate it with the 70% rule as if I am flipping the property because if I know what you can flip it for, I know what you need to buy for it. I know what I need to sell it for. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Kayla Baylor, sounds like you got you a deal in the making, honey. Go put that deal on the contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Dexter. Bam. You're live. What happened? I lost Dexter. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, Dexter, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go ahead, Titan. You're up. What's going on? What's up, y'all? Hey. What's happening, man? My bad. I got my little three year old right here. Hey. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, 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 Flip, you want to see something? Watch this. No, who is that right there? The man. That just let y'all know how much flip man be playing in our house. You hear me? Oh, yes. Wow. yes. What's yeah. up, man? So, so what, listen, his name? his name Logan. Say what's up. What's up, what's up, up man? Yeah, so, so, all right, so y'all just answered my question as far as me. I'm working seven to seven, right? Seven, eight to seven P. So, all right. And Reniki, I know you said, do I get breaks? Yeah, but the break is like, it's on, a, it's a production line. So they like, hey, go ahead. You get your little 15 minutes and come back. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's kind of like a fear that I have. Like, all right, well, I can take some time off, but to focus on my business, but then it's like, well, shoot, I got to pay the rent. So I know this is really what's paying the rent at this time. Uh -huh. So I think that's more or less of a mentality that I got to get out of to actually step out there. But the whole question is, all right, so when I, I got a, a list off of um off of prop stream, right? And so when I uploaded it, it was like all the numbers didn't come back. So only like three numbers came back that I could text. So, but it, I got numbers to all the numbers. So should I call those phone numbers? Like, it, could they be landlines and you know, so like yeah, 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 most definitely. You want you all, you know, you don't want to want to just text. You want to call them also. Okay, I got to get over that whole fear of uh, cold calling too. It's all wanna... mental. It's all mental. Yeah. Hey, you, you got you got. Hey, you got a, a, a unbelievable reason. Right. To make this happen right behind you, man. Yeah. Right. And I that's have to tell you that. Yeah, yeah, and that's my main focus. That my both of my boys. That's what I'm doing it for. Okay. Hey, yes, and another thing is too, Flip. You um, you say follow your steps. I'm gonna show you my bandit signs right quick. Right. Watch this. All right. Yes, sir. What's up? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? South Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm I'm focusing on uh my my location right now, but I kind of want to step out in Charlotte too because I got a lot of family that live in Charlotte, so right. I can actually you know send them some signs or whatever the case is and be like, hey, listen, you know, put this out for me yeah, or whatever. That, that, that's now easy. that's an easy virtual hole and selling virtual wholesale. Now when you got family in a major market like that or whatever, that's 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 more money falling out of the sky. You're gonna exactly. get it going, man. You putting in 12 hours, you're doing what you need to do. You know, you're going you're gonna you're gonna succeed at this because if you can work 12 hours there and do your thing, when you get this going, you, you're yep. gonna you're gonna be major in the game. You on the weekend, so you work on the weekends. We work uh, Monday through Saturday. Hey. So, yeah, so, do you have um, a family member, a friend, or someone that also want to run this business? That also on their own little, you know, we all we all have little islands out here when we can do so much more if we come together. You have anyone that you could trust to answer your phone calls, or you all are partnering and they could do something together? Um. Yeah, I got like one or two people, but. I think it would be more or less of me getting them out of the whole uh, what making money in real estate with no cash or credit. What? I but you got the play though. You got right. the play. You got the playbook. So right. all you need is the players. That's it. You got the playbook. You teach them. You can do it. We we teach it every day, every week. You right. know, it's 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 plenty of videos out there to show them to make them believers in what you're looking to do. So at right. the end of the day, don't underestimate your family members and members around you who has the time. You may have the play and they have the time to run it. So, you know, or whatever the case may be. So while you're working, you give them the play so they know exactly how to handle it. Now, some days you may have to be working seven days a week now just to say, you know, take things to the next level. Um, but don't underestimate people around us. We can't do it all alone. Right. You know, bring somebody along with you. So mm -hmm. it's okay to cold call on Sundays? Yeah, it's awful. I mean, I don't know. What, what's the thing on Sunday, time? Um, I think that's supposed to be um, hands <laughs> off on that. Um, Unless uh, you gator. No, uh, you know, you 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 let me back up on that. <laughs> not, not, not in a mass way. Now, if you, if you found maybe like uh, five to ten that you found from, you know, it don't even have to be driving for dollars. I don't think you would be 
you know, considered no uh, telemarketer if you're only calling a small number like that or whatever. So uh, you, you'll be good. You know, I, I will reach out to them in the afternoon on Sundays. And um, a lot of people have uh, they sort of like a, a real estate mindset anyway on Sundays. A lot of open houses are done on Sundays or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you know, do what you got to do, man. What you got to do. At the end of the day, do what you got to do. Right. That's 72 hours a week, man. So. And, uh, and it's tough. It's tough. When I get home, I get off work. I just, I'll be trying to sit in front of the computer, trying to figure out what type of list to pull that I'll be doing this number here. Yeah. You'll find if you, you cut your efforts down in half and you can get a bigger pie because you got more than just you making moves. Okay. So don't be afraid to bring somebody with you. Exactly. Half a zero is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right, that's the fact. I'm I appreciate it, y'all. Oh, Renika, I hit you in your inbox too on Instagram about some funding too. So, oh uh, well, hit me one more time so you can get in the top of my box. All right, I got you. What's your handle? So she'll know who you are. Right. Uh, it's, it's called the Real Titan on Instagram. D A underscore Real Titan. I'm gonna look for you tonight after we get off. All right, say less. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for what y'all are doing, too. Y'all understand how much blessings y'all bring to the community. Mm. All right. Thank, Thank you, Titan, and for All joining right. us. Logan, we'll see you on the next go-round, and your other young son, y'all will be in Zimbabwe. We'll tie before you know it. <laughs> we'll do. I'll see y'all at the top. <laughs> Bye. All right. So, Mr. Dexter, you ready? I see you down there. Boom. Why is there he be there, and then when I click on him, he go away. Right, so the real okay. Um, hello, how you doing, Miss the Real Royal? Oh, hey, she moving. You young lady, young lady. I see you. Oh, they moving on your end. You got the bonnet on. Tell him it's not time with the bonnet. <laughs> she was. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to remove you, and as soon as I see you moving around, um, I see you're live, but when I see that yeah, you're active right, again, I'll bring you back on. Okay, and Dexter, you ready now, man? Are you can ready? Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. I be see you. <laughs> hey, Dexter. Can you see me, or can you hear me? Yes, I can see and hear you. It keeps breaking up. I can't hear what's going on. Oh, it may be your internet connection. We 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 ready to rock. We can see you. What's your question, love? I can't hear you guys. It keeps breaking up. Oh, it may be. Your I think it might be my connection. I'm not sure. Just uh, say it, and we'll say it. We'll answer it because we can hear you. I, uh, uh, if can you hear me at least? Yeah. Yes. Very clear. Okay, if you can hear me at least, let me just say this. Um, Ty, we talked about a house over on uh, Mun, Mun in East Orange. Um, the house, the um, the house was like halfway demolished on top of it, but it's fixed in the bottom. It has a lot of uh, acreage in the back. Do you remember this or not? Um, yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yes, I do. Okay. I remember. Yes. Two thumbs up. Yes, I remember. Okay. We got to cut it. Um, we got to cut it. Yeah. Okay. So, Dexter, if you can hear me, I just text you in the private chat. So, just respond to that. Um, I'll bring you a question. And when I bring you back on the next time, just go ahead and rattle off your question because we can hear you and see you loud and clear. Oh, let's see here. Let me send that. Damn, got that done. Okay, guys, um, you still have the opportunity, guys. Very little, but it's still an opportunity for you to join us live and ask your question, just like Titan, Ms. Royal, and Dexter did. Mm -hmm. um, Dre Rush, ooh, I'm going to say you're in the right place. Uh, the question is, how do I start the process of wholesaling houses? You forgot about the people. You just answer that one. I have not. Um, yeah, we, well, we sort of, uh, answered it before for someone else, but we'll do it again. Uh, it starts with educating yourself. Um, um, again, I'm not sure how you found us tonight. Uh, well, welcome. Um, everything you need to know is right here 
on my YouTube channel um, that you can access, obviously, at any time. So now it's up to you. Uh, the best way to succeed at something, here's a little secret. Simply know what to do. If you know what to do, that increases your chances of succeeding greatly. So if the knowledge is free, then there's really no excuse for it not to happen or whatever. So and others have done it. Many of others have watched just my content and um, and then and pulled it off. You know, they're no smarter than you are. I know I'm not. You know, you just have to put the effort in, educate yourself, and then take action. You'll know what to do once you put the once you educate yourself on this information. All right, Ms. Royal is back. Hey, you ready? Ms. Royal. Ms. Royal. Here you go. Ms. Royal. Okay. Hey. Everybody's freezing. Everybody. Are you freezing on y'all? Y'all got to do one way in Hawaii. You know what? You're right. 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 You're because I can see her moving when I don't have it. But when it's on the Get them hyenas out of here, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What are y'all doing? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take a question from... Is this my way in Africa? What am I yes, talking yes. about? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wait, wait, you don't even know where you went. You just, <laughs> yeah, I know. You're in the metaverse. You're definitely in the metaverse. Hey, we just threw right, right, everything on a helicopter and made our way over here. No, no, no. I'm going to see if you caught that. Not on a helicopter. Okay. Um, not across the Atlantic. We are not going to. Nah, that, that ain't how you got there. Um, we got an electric. <laughs> we got an EV. Helicopter, EH, oh, no. uh, uh, electric helicopter. Okay, Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Capri Knight says, I have a property. I'm sorry, the key word, had. Capri Knight says, I had a property under contract, and in my 15 day inspection period, I found out it needed more repairs than stated and tried to rene renegotiate. And the seller didn't want to. I had to terminate my contract, and the seller was pissed. But that's what the 15 day inspection period is for, mm -hmm. right? Hey? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. yes. So, I mean, they would have been pissed if they were allowed to negotiate and they could still, still, still close. Yeah, that's what it's for. They wanted more than what it was really worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, let's see here. I've asked all those. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So, boom, Mr. Trucker, Tucker, not tr Trucker. Bam, you with us? How are you doing today? All right. How's it going, guys? Going great. Well. Yeah. What's going on, my man? Nothing much, man. From? Say that again. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm calling from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. I actually got a few questions. Uh, it's a two-part question. One is, I do have prop stream, um, and I've been looking at all the um, vacant housing um, and wondering if I should uh, skip trace all the vacant housing in the area uh, and call everybody, or is that something that you suggest or not to, or is that overkill? Or is there such a thing as overkill on it? I was about to say, it's never overkill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it don't exist in this world when you're trying to generate leads. There's no such thing as overkill. Right. Uh, number one, um, yeah, you you um, if you've already stripped traced the list, yeah, you want to reach out to everyone either by phone or by text uh, or and and mail. You know, you can hit them in three ways. You know, if your budget allows it. So, but yeah, right. it's not going to be overkill. You know, which you'll soon find out um, that you have right. to talk to a certain number of people to get to deals. A, a certain number of property owners that are willing to sell to get the deal. So, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what's yeah. your second part? Of the, question? the second part of it is I, I'm at a standstill, kind of with uh, just knowing the what to say to these these uh, clients, or I call them clients because the other uh, jobs that I've had, but these other people knowing what to say when you're talking to them, 
uh, what information exactly to get. And I have looked at your videos. Um, I've been watching the videos to try to get, you know, what my call should go like. Uh, well, but it, it's a little well, sketchy. Well, again, uh, well, technically, you're just going to be, if they're even going to have a conversation with you about buying the property, mm -hmm. you're going to uh, be fact-finding uh, initially. Um, and just a slow mm -hmm. build up to, to the negotiations. You know, as I said, uh, obviously with your opening statement, you got past that and they're actually mm -hmm. interested in talking to you about selling it. So now you just want to get into facts about the property. How many bedrooms and bath, uh, the age of the roof, how is it heated and cooled? Is it vacant or occupied? Mm -hmm. um, has there been any recent updates or renovations to the property? Uh, does it have a mortgage, any taxes or liens? And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, so I know I called you if you decide to sell your your property, what would be the reason why you would sell it? And so, you know, from there, you're just trying to build a little bit more rapport. Hopefully, it'll open up to you and, uh, just, you know, you discover some real motivation. And then you pop them with the, the magic question. Um, and all cash and clothing quickly, what's the least amount you'll accept for it as is? Wait mm -hmm. on the response, regardless of what they say, whether the numbers work for you or not. Follow up. That's the best you can do. And um, I, from there, it's just going to be the numbers playing out. So it's really no magic wand. Obviously, some people be a little better than others. But just that basic, what I just gave you, you know, it still boils down to will the numbers work once you all get there. If you feel mm -hmm. comfortable that you've gotten their bottom line price, whether they force you into making an offer or you uh, get them to give you a price. Ideally, you want them to give you a price. Some people just won't do it. So now you have to just go ahead and just, uh, the rule of thumb is, is, is offer something that you're embarrassed, embarrassed about. Normally, if you hadn't, if you're not embarrassed about it, you probably hadn't offered low enough, you know. So, uh, and some people yeah. can be easily more easily embarrassed than others, and some not that embarrassed at all. Okay. So, okay. Uh, but you, you, uh, be a little cute about it. So, uh, what do you think, Renique? Um, yeah, I agree. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, no problem at all, man. Um, Make it happen, man. Uh, appreciate it, man. All right. Have a good night. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, Earth, Earthness Essentials says, can you clarify how to distinguish for traffic conditions, low versus high price points, please, and thanks? I don't know what that means. Um, I'm not sure what they may got to be a little bit more. Um, uh, direct. They have to be a little bit more direct on that. I think it's good. It's good. It's still, it's still on. It's good. Um, so, Earth Essentials, if you could just elaborate on what you mean by traffic conditions. Um, so, I've been chilling, says, can you wholesale a quit claim deed? Yep. But do you want to? <laughs> Got, 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 yeah. <laughs> you got somebody willing to do it, yeah. You, know? you can. It happens. Hey, Renikia, uh, whether you and I will do it or not, it happens. Cause they, it happens all the time. Yeah, they can do it. <laughs> so if you can find somebody that's willing to take it off your hands like that, then make it happen. Uh, right. The only thing we're saying is just a little bit more difficult to do it, do it that way. Um, but there you I mean, are. you know you wouldn't. Because it's not warranted of any liens, you know. You buy, you quit claiming everything. The house could be worth one, but there could be a whole lien on it against it that you got to take care of. So there's a reason why we want warranty deeds because it warrants the deed um, of any lien. So. Okay. Um, <laughs> Deborah says. Calling on a Sunday, you're going to have Aunt, East, Aunt Esther calling you a heathen. You old fish-eyed fool. <laughs> hey, they called me on a Sunday. Michelle. So Michelle says, I wouldn't call on a Sunday. People are busy with their families. But that's also normally the only day that people have to handle business. Um, mm -hmm. Because hey, they, they are working. Hey, 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 my man trying to feed his. Right. We got this thing right here. <laughs> I mean, the worst you can say is call me back tomorrow. <laughs> So, right, right. Call me yeah. Monday. I'm busy right now. You know, now. I think if you do and they answer, just apologize. You know, I know it's Sunday. I just want to apologize. It's my only day off. You know, yeah. and at the end of the day, I think and, some and people are. The are the I understand. I mean, your only day off is why you call me. I get it. You know, but 
yeah, I will I will just have some disclaimer because you know everyone religion beliefs is different. Some people first day of the week is Sunday. They ready to talk any business, you know. So you just know it's a numbers yeah. game, man. Yeah. 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 I agree. And you, your your script can begin with, hey, I apologize for calling you on Sunday. Do you have a moment? Am I interrupting anything? Just ask. Yeah. And they'll yeah. tell you, yes, you are. <laughs> Call me tomorrow. Call me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> or no, you're not. I'm good. Like I'm just sitting here watching football. Like, what's up? You know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, just put that in, put that into your script uh, to initiate the call with an apology for interrupting them, and then that sets them on ease. That sets them on ease. Like, well, at least you appreciate my time. You still call though. But right. Right. <laughs> okay. I mean, the world of, of cell phones, people ain't answering calls they don't want to answer these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. BB Gaines, you're welcome. They said thanks for going live. You're more than welcome, Betty Boo Gaines. Thanks for a lot. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, we get it in. Get yeah. It in. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, so let's see. I think we've answered that question like, multiple times tonight. We've answered that question multiple times tonight. Um, let's go here. Ty, this is from Walt Ross. I've been watching your videos for about two months now. I'm going to get Bandit Signs to start wholesaling, but what do you think mm, about running a Facebook ad? Um, that's a proper way of doing it. Uh, it can be effective, but expensive. So, um, yeah, uh, it took, well, I never did figure it out. I had to pay someone to, to help us figure it out. It, and it wasn't cheap to, to get them, to, you know what I'm saying, to turn over their uh, system. So. But yeah, it can be. If there are a lot of eyeballs, wherever the eyeballs at, um, you can you can figure out the the landscape uh, there. Uh, you can generate leads for sure, wherever the eyeballs are. All right, Savon Norrington says, "How can I build a positive relationship with the seller?" Don't call him on Sunday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, well, I sort, of, I sort of went through that that whole process of. Um, uh, if they're willing to talk to you, number one, um, you, you know, the questions that you're asking, you're fact finding, but you're also trying to get some, uh, you know, build some rapport and getting them to open up by the questions that you're asking about the property and their possible situation on why they want to sell. So uh, do more listening than talking um, that is what I would highly recommend. But just go through those uh, that uh, I guess that. I wouldn't say a script, but what I was talking about, you know, about 10 minutes ago. So, um, but just asking, you know, questions about the property and trying to get an understanding on why they would consider selling. And normal people just open up, especially when you just start asking about details about the property. They'll go into a story why this happened and, you know, why they had to fix this and why they're tired of this tenant. And this, you know, they let the brother stay there. He told you know, it's going into all kind of crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, you know, oh, wow, that's terrible. <laughs> really? um, so if y'all missed it ty posted earlier today what was that yesterday that was earlier today um the article about the lawsuits coming for zillow um interesting you might want to follow up and read on that See, I'll be paying attention. Mm -hmm. But Jamie Pounds wants to know, are the houses on Zillow that are listed as for sale by owner on the MLS? Mm -hmm. It say, it will say MLS. So if you, if you, if it's on MLS, it has an MLS number somewhere in the overview on Zillow. So just scroll down. You will see the MLS number if it's on MLS. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's for, if it's listed by an agent, a uh, broker, or whatever, it'll say for sale. If it's listed by the owner, it'll say for sale by owner. Okay. Um, currently. Currently. So 4405 Productions wants to know, could you better explain ARV for me? So ARV, after repair value. Okay, it's ARV and not AVR. All right. So um, <laughs> I guess you won't ARV. believe. Um, <laughs> So the actual is an acronym. It is an acronym. I'm saying what the ARV is. That's an acronym. Or... Well, 
No, the exactly. acronym is a word that's in the place where you use the letters. Oh, what is that then? What do they call that when it's just the letters? It's just an abbreviation. Abbreviation, I guess. I thought it's called something else. An acronym is if it was a word, like cash stood for cash. Well, what's a, what's a synonym? A synonym is a word. It's a similar that, word. Similar word. Oh. A metaphor is a similar word used in like or ass, mm. comparing two words. I, 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 like, I, I, Synonym is using like her ass to compare two terms. That is not. <laughs> it is not. A simile is not. Well, you actually got two people in here still in school. <laughs> <laughs> they, get, they get pounded with this stuff, so I have. They know. <laughs> Hold on. And, and, All right, we, oh, we got this thing called Google that was sent called Google, because what you uh -huh. do, what you're not gonna do. I think it is an acronym, isn't it? Mm. That's why I do numbers. It's just too much, too much words. You are wrong. Well, let me explain why she's looking it up. All right, so <laughs> what what it stands for is after repair value. So basically, what you're trying to do is figure out uh, what will the house that you're trying to evaluate, what will it appraise for in excellent condition in retail shape let me say that and so you're basically are comparing houses that are sold that are similar to your house within a certain time frame um similar to your house certain time frame and a certain distance right so that's what it means if you want a real breakdown on how to do that just text the letters arv to the 205-964-5243 um you you want to add yeah that? no that's perfect i mean it's you know it's basically if i fix up this property what could i possibly sell it for if i fix it up what could be the possible value of what i can sell my property for which is the after repair value is the value after you repair it Nothing burns me up then to be corrected by my 11 year old. I stand corrected. I did. I did have the incorrect terms. Ty, you said synonym, which are two words that are similar, similar. And then, which is antonym is the opposite of that, which are two words that are opposites. Mm -hmm. What I was referencing was a simile. A simile is comparing two words using like or as, mm -hmm. and a metaphor is comparing two words not using like or as. I'm right about acronym. Mm -hmm. Acronym, yeah, that's acronym. It is acronym. A A A A A A A A A ARV is an acronym. Like NASA is an acronym. NASA stands for something. I know ARV stands, stands for something. It stands for after repair value. Oh. Dang. What? Yeah, I, I, know, I, I don't know everything. I'm getting all. Hey. It is. You read some of my replies and comments. I probably got missed a word or two out there no, somewhere. But I was correct as well, Flip. Right. The definition my is. My name is Tyrone. Okay, oh, okay Tyrone. Oh, 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 we on first names now. Okay, Tyrone. An acronym is an abbreviation. I said it was an abbreviation, so we were both accurate. It okay. is, but yeah, acronym yeah. is abbreviation. Yes, the acronym is an abbreviation. All right, all right, okay. Oh. You didn't say it was abbreviation. Okay. okay, I'm just saying. Don't do me like that. I can't be <laughs> over with the O and two. <laughs> no, I hate losing. No. It's, a, it's, it's a daughter correction for me. Yes, know. yes. <laughs> Oh. And when the lab old daughter corrects you, you gotta stand corrected. I'm you standing think? on it, like I'm wrong and all. I'm standing on it. I am that ain't what they taught us in school. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's out there. See, that's what's out there, right? Hey, uh, uh, I've had a couple of people on uh, on the channel um talking about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or whatever. Uh, before we close out of here, it, people in the comments on the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, if you're interested in hearing from someone that's uh, deep in the game, tell you what the benefits are, how to get into it, start making some money, investing, uh, comment, and then I'm going to give you some instructions so we can get this individual on. Okay. All right, All right. So got to do that. Out, so. Will you put up, uh, Renikia? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been, whew, I do it and I try to dog pile all these questions together so i'm gonna read them all at one time okay talek says 
Renikia, do you provide funding on fix and flips in Western Michigan? Okay. Yes. Barshawn Zimmerman, what are the requirements to qualify for the business funding? Mm -hmm. All right. Let me go to the next. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They stay here. They still here. Um, hold on. It was three more. Okay. DY the trucker. Does your company do credit checks for business funding? And I'm going to let you go ahead and answer those three mm -hmm. in regards to what services your company offers. Um, so that was credit checks, Western Michigan, and requirements to, call, to qualify for business funding. Uh, perfect. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, for the first question, we're in all 50 states, mine is like two or three, which is like North Dakota, South Dakota. I mean, a couple states that I don't think we, no one even forgets is there. Uh, but outside of that, yes, we do lend in Michigan. I'm probably one of the only lenders that's kind of lending in Michigan. Michigan has been one of those cities, um, states that has been kind of redlined by a lot of lenders. I don't know why. I mean, it's still prime real estate in my opinion, but we do. Um, as far as business funding, um, I think I remember the last one. The last one talked about credit, oh, oh unsecured funding. What was the second question? Uh, hold on, I gotta say, well, no, 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 no. he asked, um, do what, what, what type of unsecured funding I have? Yeah, I think that's what he asked. So, as far as the gap funding, I'm, I'm relaunching our credit card financing option, um, first of January. But right now, we have a pretty much a gap funding program that leverages your business cash flow. Um, so we can win up to 100, 150 percent of your business cash flow monthly gross income, um, and we'll be able to provide you a three to five year loan with that. In the next couple of weeks, I'll be relaunching our credit card financing option where you don't need any financials. You just need a, um, it was a 680. Right now, it's a 720 credit score to be able to leverage your credit up to $100,000, $150,000. Um, and as far as credit, yes, all business loans uh, will always leverage your business credit um, until you get to a point where you have at least about seven to eight business lines on your business credit that's all um that's all up to date and and you know planned on it properly every month uh and until your business is cash flowing and so your business is cash flowing you have at least about six to seven i mean seven to eight trade lines on your business credit you always will have the person guarantee your, your business loans always all right, guys, and you can reach out to Renikia at fundmynextdeal.com. Again, that's fundmynextdeal.com. She is available across all social media platforms. You can reach her there as well. Um, allow 48 to 72 hours for her or someone from her company to give you a call back. All right, Ty, what you got for me? Uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll just, go, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, put the thing back up. I mean, this, yeah. Uh, where is it? What? You took it off. Took what off? Oh, I can't mind. I mean, uh, you, on the banners, uh, you see where I got the uh, Bitcoin thing at on the banners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. See. Yeah. So do this for me, guys. Reach out to uh, Bitcoin Zay on his Twitter handle at, at Bitcoin Zay. I have it on the screen here. And uh, tell him that you all want to hear from him on my channel, Ask Flip Man. So please do that for me. Uh, DM, DM him at uh, Bitcoin Zay, that's Bitcoin Z-A-Y, uh, on Twitter is where he's going to respond at. And um, let's, let's get this knowledge. He's, he's, he's uh, 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 very informative, and I'd love to get that content on my show for you all and my own press personal mm -hmm. investing. All right, so uh, we've uh, knocked it out for this week. Uh, appreciate everyone participating, uh, both the young ladies and the uh, two students in here who had to correct their mama on uh, this uh, mm -hmm. synonym thing. So um, mm -hmm. as we always like to say, guys, uh, make sure you like and share this. Uh, follow me on uh, Twitter at Axe Flipman and Instagram and TikTok. And we'll see you guys on the flip side. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't go yet. Sure. Okay, I didn't go. Oh, was, uh, Adrian's <laughs> birthday was uh, Tuesday. We had to, we had to, we had to, oh, okay. It, it, it was Tuesday. Okay. Uh, I'm That's sorry. I meant to put a thing up there. Mm. Um, she kept messing with it, didn't want me to fool with the thing. So, 
Uh, but Adrian's birthday was Tuesday. She turned 23. Oh, um, and, uh, Happy uh, birthday, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Even though she got a, a 20. <laughs> Hey, 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 don't be hey, trying to do the hey, math. Don't be hey, trying to do the hey, math. The math ain't mathing, but hey, don't be hey, trying to do it. She's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> she's crazy in so many ways. So happy 23rd birthday to you, Adrian. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Now, guys, we will not be here. Adrian, happy birthday in the comments. Yay! Um, we will not be here next Thursday, guys. I'm sure we all know why um make money don't spend money y'all don't go crazy on that black friday okay. make money don't spend money make money don't spend money. Money, <laughs> don't spend money okay guys um but getting that bag we wishing you all safe holidays travel safely enjoy your loved ones and we will see you all on the flip side bye guys Text me and I'll text you back. Text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. You text me and I'll text you back. Tip top, you don't stop. I will help you make your paper stack. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at now? 205 964 524 Yep, yep. 205 964 You know.